Let's talk about the ongoing conflicts in the Red Sea. Maersk has announced on Friday that it will suspend all shipping through the Red Sea for the foreseeable future because of the threat of attacks on its vessels. Freight rates have soared due to the Red Sea issue to discuss the impact on India. Sunil K. Vaswani, the Executive Director, Container Shipping Lines Association, joins us now to talk about that. Mr. Vaswani, good morning and thanks a lot for joining in. Many industries are you know, under a lot of pressure because of what's happening with the shipping space and the Red Sea concerns. Just tell us where are we at the moment, what is the situation on ground at the moment and what is the kind of impact this is having on uh, freight rates, on the industry overall? Yeah, morning. Uh, 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 as I uh, mentioned the last time, that uh, if, if things deteriorate, uh, you know, things could possibly get a little more uh, concerning. And now, uh, lately, as you would have known, the, the Maersk uh, line vessel, Maersk, although they had announced getting back into the Red Sea, uh, you know, the, unfortunately, there was an attack on their vessel. And after that attack, uh, they have suspended their services over the Red Sea uh, 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 for quite some time. I mean, there's, it's, it's indefinite till things improve. Uh, you know, uh, quite frankly, the shipping lines have been, uh, you know, uh, concerned with these attacks that are happening. And particularly recently, also, uh, there was not only this attack, but also the U.S., uh, uh, pulled out their, uh, their aircraft carrier along with the five warships that were accompanying it uh, from the Red Sea. Now, all this has left us in quite a vulnerable position and we're left with no choice uh, but to move uh, over the Cape of Good Hope. Uh, also, as far as the uh, Indian government is concerned, I think the Indian government's efforts have, uh, are very, very encouraging uh, because recently they saved the uh, Indian crew also of 15 members uh, but I heard some news items saying that uh, the security to the Indian ships would be provided. I only hope that the same security uh, will also be provided to the uh, container ships because container ships are essentially all foreign ships and, and all the, or practically all of India's exports and imports are carried sure. by these foreign container ships. So, uh, so that's... Mr. Vaswani? Uh, uh, I understand, uh, sure, I understand the situation on the ground. Can you help us with the rates? What are the shipping rates currently? How has it changed since, you know, this entire issue started? If you could just help us understand and also what is your own prognosis of uh, freight rates? Yeah, so so the rates to the US uh, have gone up by about 70%. Uh, if you recall, I had mentioned the last in my last interview also that if things deteriorate, the rates could go up by about roughly 80%. So the, to the U.S., they have already gone up by about 70%. Uh, to Europe, I'm afraid the rates have increased uh, more. You know, they more than doubled. In fact, almost tripled the, to Europe. Wow. <clears throat> that, is, that, is, uh, that is very, very large, right? And this issue yes. is, is, what, a month old uh, yes. now? <clears throat> right? So you're saying 70% hike in container freight rates? Uh, to the US and uh, Europe is uh, has doubled basically. More, more than double, more than double, al almost close to triple. <clears throat> and this is from which ports here uh, in India? Uh, I'm talking I mean, about essentially Navasheva and Mundra. Uh, two two ports like, I mean, <clears throat> the, 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 the European ports, North continental ports, Mediterranean, and, and then when you're talking about the US, is essentially the US East Coast. Hmm. Okay. Uh, could you uh, could you tell us, <clears throat> you know, uh, if uh, uh, and 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 just one more thing, sir. Going taking the route via the Cape of Good Hope. I was talking to some people in shipping, as I was saying that not only is it longer, there's an issue of longer. There's also <clears throat> it's it's a much tougher route because the seas are st uh, much st much much more difficult to navigate. So containers yes, go sure. overboard, etc. So <clears throat> you know other costs like insurance costs, etc. Also arise. Uh, could, you, could you explain that? Yeah. Absolutely. As I mentioned the last time, that mm. the costs include uh, insurance costs. They include <coughs> the costs of uh, chartering new ships because uh, we are putting in additional capacity. So at least in the on the service, when you're going over the Cape of Good Hope, your transit time increases by a good 10 to 12 days. And for that, if you have to maintain that service, a weekly service, uh, you know, in a weekly service, say about seven to eight ships are, are put into the into the service. But when you're, and that's when you're moving over the Cape of, uh, when you're moving over the Swiss Canal. But when you move over the Cape of Good Hope, because the transit increases by a good 10 to 12 days at least, you need to add at least another two ships, if not more, onto the service. So you, but for putting in those two ships, the, the cost is more, you know, the, the, the ships cost you, the charter hire goes up. 
uh, uh, not only because of the number of additional days that are involved, but also the demand for the ships. So the charter mm -hmm. rate also has gone up. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, you know, in the container uh, container business, how much is, uh, how, how does it typically operate? Are these, uh, do they all operate on a <clears throat> day rate basis? Are these, is, are these long term fixed price contracts which then will reset? Uh, <clears throat> how, how do the bulk of it operate? See, it all depends <clears throat> line, line to line. They have their own uh, systems. But as of now, because this is a kind of an emergency situation, the lines, uh, those who have additional capacities are putting in their additional capacities, which also costs money. And on the other hand, those who don't are hunting into the market for uh, for chartering ships. And because they're hunting the market, the charter rates have gone up as well. You know, mm. so 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 this this all is adding to the cost. And and uh, and also, if I may say that the buyers, you know, the buyers of Indian commodities have, as of now, many of them suspended their buying because of the rates having gone up. But this suspension we don't see long term because eventually if the trade adjusts by itself to the situation. So eventually when their stocks also start depleting, they will start placing orders and the supply chain will get used to the longer transit because they will place their orders that much earlier. Okay. In fact, I wanted to ask you about that. What is the you know uh, impact that this higher rates are having on industries? I mean, whether it is, say, the auto sector, whether it is textiles, a whole host of industries, actually. Uh, where are you seeing the maximum hit? Where have the orders been suspended the most <clears throat> as of now? And in terms of a timeline, what are we looking at? I know it's very hard to predict, but uh, what are you looking at? See, commodities, export commodities like steel, engineering goods, pharma, chemicals, textiles, agri products, they've, they've all been impacted. But what I can tell you is that the commodity market, like agri products or, or, or some, some sort of chemicals and plastics, those uh, uh, exporters have shifted to the domestic market. They are focusing now on the domestic market. As far as exports are concerned, the reefer commodities are most impacted. Like right now, we have the grape season. So the grapes normally move over to Europe via the Swiss Canal. But with the longer transit, these are perishables. So it's a question mark if they'll be able to withstand the longer transit. So those, of course, are uh, getting impacted. Mm. Mr. Vaswani, uh, <clears throat> so your prognosis uh, last time we spoke has come true, right? The, with the increase. Do you think uh, they could jump, uh, rates could jump more? If you remember back in, uh, uh, you know, I think what, mid-20, uh, maybe 2021, right? We, we'd we seen container rates go up. As, but that was a different situation. I mean, the world was opening up after COVID, etc. Uh, we had uh, container rates going up 300, 400%, maybe more in some cases. Do you think... Uh, <clears throat> this could get anywhere close to that, or this this will be contained here. What's your sense? Yeah, so I I don't think it would be uh, right to compare the situation now with the situation during COVID or immediately post COVID, because that was a difficult situation, a more dif uh, a more difficult situation, I would say, and everybody was totally unprepared for it. So even the capacities were not available. Right now, fortunately, we have the capacities more or less, by and large, available. But only thing is, there's a cost involved to it, you know. Because obviously, there's a demand and supply. The market goes up, chartering, charter rates go up. Uh, and uh, as even the Indian exporters have agreed, that there is no disruption. Initially, when COVID hit us, you know, there was disruption to an extent, although everybody was trying to put the supply chain in place. But there was definitely some amount of disruption. Right now, there's no disruption. It's only the increased transit and the cost that's gone up. So as I said, that the market and the buyers also adjust themselves to the overall cost and to the longer transits, thereby placing the orders beforehand. So there's a difference. There is no disruption as of now, which is a major advantage that we have. It's a, it's a silver lining on the cloud. It's just got that the it, cost has gone. Absolutely. That's important to understand. And thanks for explaining that to us. I just wanted to understand one more thing. So India is now using some alternative routes as well, right? As we discussed, the Cape of Good Hope route, etc., but that would mean higher energy costs, higher uh, insurance costs, or maybe course. some uh, piracy, safety costs, etc. that are involved as well. So just tell me that if this route is used more and more now, the, these alternative routes are used, apart from the ship, higher shipping costs, what are the other ancillary costs uh, you know, that would go higher for companies that are exporting? 
yeah the fuel cost definitely goes up because of the longer transit that the charter higher as i said because of longer transit the charter is normally charter rates on a day basis so if it is cost if it's 10 to 12 days more it's going to cost you that much more and the charter ra rate goes up because of the demand and of course the insurance also cost because of the uh, the longer transit the insurance cost goes up uh, so so but these are unavoidable in fact as far as the cargo is concerned if i may just explain a little bit more for cargoes moving over the uh, Swiss Canal, the Red Sea and Swiss Canal, I understand that many of the insurance companies have stopped insuring even cargo. So the exporters, even if they want to ship over the Swiss Canal, the insurance companies are reluctant to uh, to to insure their cargo. So that uh, also is hitting them as uh, far as exporters are concerned. Oh, <clears throat> I got it, uh, <clears throat> sir. I mean, you know, with the situation as is, do you think this, uh, this, this? Of course, everybody will adjust to higher rates. That will happen, but it, they'll adjust much, at much higher rates, right? Costs will go up uh, to the extent where you know, with with what's happened to shipping, etc. So, I have two questions. In your opinion, which are the industries which will get impacted the most, <clears throat> and <clears throat> which will be, and and which are the ones which will be able to take it in it, in their stride? Indian industries, which you think, both uh, via exports or imports. And second, do you think the situation will last for as long as the, uh, uh, you know, the conflict in Gaza continues, or do you think it could be longer? Go on. Yeah, I mean, definitely, as as long as the situation in Gaza continues, uh, this will this is likely to be impacted. But as I said, that it all depends on if the situation improves. If the uh, Operation Prosperity Guardian, uh, you know, increases, uh, you know, their presence in the Red Sea. And if the Indian government also uh, continues to protect ships, not only the Indian ships, but also uh, the, the foreign container ships, uh, then the situation would not be as serious uh, as uh, one is uh, fearing it to be right now. So it's all a wait and watch. Uh, also, as I say, that in every, uh, in, in every situation, uh, there is also an opportunity. So in this situation, there's also an opportunity for Indian exporters to look at new markets. I believe that the Latin America market uh, provides some sort of an opportunity for Indian exporters. Also, although the volumes will not be as large, but that's an area to look at. Also, Australia is another area to look at. So some of the other markets in the meanwhile, I'm sure the exporters also know this and they are focusing also on these markets. So these are also opportunities in the meanwhile that the Indian export community could look at. All right, we will uh, let you go on that note. It's uh, tough times actually across industries. I mean, just when they thought the COVID situation was behind us, now, you know, this whole Red Sea issue has come through. So it's been tough for businesses across the board. But hopefully things should settle. Thanks a lot for explaining the situation to us. So shipping rates, container freight rates have surged 70% to the US and doubled to Europe. Some have tripled from ports like Mundra because of the Red Sea conflict. Not looking good at all for several industries that export 